Hello, 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 everyone. We are live again. As we are planning to be live many times, today we are live again. I'm here and I'll be answering a lot of questions. But this is a very important uh, instruction you need to understand. In today's live section or this session, I'm not going to answer when is the DV lottery deadline, when is the whatever. I want you to ask me any personal question you might have about me or about life in America, and I'll go to respond to that question. Please, instruction is very, very clear. Ask anything you need to know about America or about me, and I'm going to answer that questions. So there are no questions about my case number is this number, when will I go for the interview? I will not answer that question. I'm not going to answer any question about uh, my visa is available about the documents. No. Today's section session is about asking me any question. Where did you, when did you go? How did you get your citizenship? How, whatever. Asking me any personal questions and I'll be able to answer that particular question. But also, most importantly, I will have the opportunity to give you the any inputs or anything you needed to know about life in America. So welcome, welcome everyone here on the EBM Scholars Show. In case today is your first time, you can see on the banner there, it says subscribe to EBM Scholars now and do that right now if you haven't subscribed. The goal of this particular year is to make sure that we reach 100,000 subscribers. So I would like to have your support and your appreciation and by first of all, subscribing, liking the video and sharing the video to some other people. So let's go to the questions. If you have questions, you put the question. Hello, Liz, how are you? Uh, are you busy now? You want to join? Let me know, Liz. <laughs> yeah, so. You can see here, the instruction is very clear. Please ask any personal questions you have about me or life in America, and I'll be having the opportunity to answer. So I'm not going to answer any question about affidavit support, about green card, whatever. Ask question to me directly about me or about life in America. So I'm not going to answer any other type of questions. So you can ask about the Yes, Liz, uh, I'm doing the uh, Q&A uh, right now. So if you have a question, let me know. Okay, so the first question comes from Peter Ibrahim. Peter Ibrahim, your question is, Hi, EBM. Could you tell us more about your Navy career? Thank you. That is a very good question. Because usually I usually tell people, oh, I just joined the Navy, I was saved in the military. And I encourage you to be able to save in the military. So first of all, in order to answer that very good question, I would like to give just a little bit background about the military life in America or the contract wise. When you want to join the military, uh, it's different from other countries. In other countries, the recruitment process is might be different from here. Here, the recruitment process happens every single day. You go to the recruiting station or recruiting centers and you process as long as you meet your qualifications. And the qualifications are three main qualifications. There is education requirement, which is you must have at least a high school level of education. That's number one. The second one, you must meet the age requirement. Each branch has a different age. Remember, different from your country. Some of the countries, when you go to the military, you just go to the military. And people consider army equal to military. No, army is a ground troop here, is a branch. So each branch has different age requirement. Army, 35. Navy, 35. Air Force for enlisted is 38. Uh, Air Marines, I think it's 29. So you have to know the age limit. And then there is height weight ratio. So that is, those are the few things you need to know. So if you come to America and you want to join the military, you don't need to have any work experience. As, as long as you have work minimum of, of high school education and you, you don't have any criminal background, then you have all those kind of age, you meet the age and the height weight ratio, you are good to go. You can join. When you, when you go to that join, you go in to join a specific branch. So for my case, uh, 
I joined the military while I was already have master's degree. Uh, which is different uh, here because you can ask, did you join as officer or as enlisted? I joined as enlisted. Uh, in order to join as officer, you must have a bachelor degree minimum and you must be a U.S. citizen. But if you, even if you are a PhD, if you are not a U.S. citizen, you have to join as enlisted. So for my case, I joined as enlisted because I didn't, I was not a U.S. citizen at that time. So I joined in the year 2012. That's when I joined. So why did I join in the first place? There are so many benefits which I ask, I ask you to consider them. Number one, there is the benefit of is a good job, is a secure job, is a government job. It has good benefits, like in terms of medical, in terms of retirement, in terms of whatever, those kind of things. Then uh, if you're not a citizen, you are given citizenship within six to eight weeks. Uh, so I got my citizenship while I was in the military. Then apart from that, you get education benefit if you want to study bachelor, master's, PhD, they pay for your school and the cost of living. Then apart from that, there is the issue of uh, what other thing? There is the issue of housing. Usually I tell people about my house. Okay, I purchased this house. But I was managed, I was able to purchase this house because I didn't pay any down payment. In order to purchase a home in America, you have to pay a down payment. So, for instance, a house is a 200000 You have to pay at least 20% of that. Do you have that money? In America, you get this money. You can say, oh, I get 50000 I get 70000 per year. But almost all of the money goes back away. There is tax. There are so many expenses you have to take here in America. So you might come here and you can stay for 20 years without having a house. But if you join the military, that can be able to shorten your life. So for me, I joined as enlisted because I was, a U, uh, I was not a U.S. citizen. I was a green card holder, but with master's degree. So I joined. After joining... Uh, you take the what you call as verbal exam as enlisted. Uh, for the officers, they have their own exam. So I joined as enlisted. Uh, after joining as enlisted, then I was there and I processed to become an officer. And while I was about to process, so here the military, you stay here on the contract. Different from some of the countries. Some of the countries in Africa, for instance, in Tanzania, when you join, you become a, like a civil servant. You become there as a permanent until you retire. Here is if you want but you sign the first four years, most of the jobs, and then you keep adding, enlisting, or you are going to uh, add more years after the contract ends. So that is how it is. So for me, my first contract was four years, but I didn't save for four years. I saved for about two and something years because of some of the family and the medical related situation. So that made me to get out of the military. So even if I got uh, out before the four years, I still considered as a, uh, as, as, as a, I'm considered as a veteran and I receive all the other benefits as a veteran. In addition to that, I get uh, extra, uh, what they call disability. So there is a certain situation I cannot expect, but I get $133 per, year, per month, every month until I die as a disability from the, uh, from the military. And it helps me to get more government jobs uh, if I have to get jobs for the government or federal jobs or any job you apply here in America, they will ask you, are you uh, a U.S. Uh, veteran? If you are a U.S. veteran, you get extra point to get certain jobs uh, for any job. But if you apply for the federal government job, let's say there are 100 people who have applied for the job. The minimum qualification is bachelor degree. And I have a bachelor degree, but there are some people with a Ph.D., but because I have bachelor degree and the minimum is bachelor degree and I'm the only veteran, I'll be the only veteran to be given that particular job. So that is something you need to understand uh, when we are talking about the benefits of becoming or joining the military. So that will be able to, uh, to help you if you want. So personal, I advise you, uh, if you want to have a very good life here and if you are capable, not all of them, but if you are capable of serving in the military, you have to do that. It is not very difficult, especially when you are going like Air Force, you are going to the Navy, compared if you say you are going to the Army or you are going to the Marines. So that is overall, if I could tell more about my Navy life. So I, if you wanted to work for 20 years uh, in the military, you can retire after 20 years, meaning you will be given 50% of your salary on a monthly basis until you die. That is, even if you don't become a military, you work as a federal government job. When you say, I'm retiring in the federal, you'll be getting 50% of the retirement until, uh, of the monthly salary until you go to retire.
So that is about a little bit about the Navy, and I'm encouraging you to take that chance of uh, joining the U.S. military in general. It's up to you what you want to do, if you want to be in the Marine, Army, Air Force, whatever branch you want to be, those are the things you need to do. Okay, there is a very good question from Roll with Liz. Uh, Roll with Liz is in is a Ugandan but lives in Colorado. The question is, what should I consider getting a credit card for the first time? That is a very good question. And why am I saying that is a very good, good question? It's a good question because majority of us do not know even what is a credit card, importance of credit card, and the entire credit life here in America. Let me go back to put in my African context life. In my African context life is like this way. If I don't have money, I go to borrow to, from my friends. I go to borrow from my neighbor. And if they say someone gives you maybe $100 and you promise I will pay you after a month, if I pay back before the month or I pay on the exact date, I create a credibility. That if another time I go to my friend or to my neighbor, I can get some little money and that they can trust me. So in Africa or in Asia, most of our developing countries' lifestyle, we are going to trust one another on a personal basis on how you can get uh, support. Sometimes even where if you want to get even like people to come for the funeral, do you go to others' funeral? So your credibility is very, very important for people to trust you. You are never to trust you. Are you a trustworthy person? But when you come here in America, we don't have the culture of going to the neighbor to ask you for salt. We don't have the culture of going to the neighbor and borrow $50, borrow $100. If you go to the neighbor, maybe even the neighbor doesn't have that money. They will tell you, go to the bank. So that will be something you need to understand. It can be able to cause that particular problem. So if it's going to cause that type of problem, so this financial institutions have a proper way on how someone can be trusted in America. This system has no racism. There's no race in this system. So there is what we call the credit score. Credit score is a, is a score which is going to determine your financial behavior, is a score which is used to determine if someone can borrow you money, if you borrow the money from someone, they can give you money, hoping that you'll give the money back. And if you don't give money back, they have to put in strict, very strict instructions and conditions so that you can pay back. So, one of the ways is through credit card. So when you have a bank, uh, when you go to the bank, you can open your account at the bank. The bank will give what you call, if you put your money in the bank, is called debit. That is the debit card, which has your actual money in the bank. The other way is the bank gives you the money amount certain we call credit limit. So the bank can say you have 500, they give you the 500 money in your card. And you can use that card for whatever you want. But for the condition that each month you have to pay maybe $25. That is condition. They don't teach you anything else apart from that. So there are cards you can get from the banks. The, uh, these malls, whatever these big companies you target, Walmart, whatever you go to, uh, Barnes and whatever they have, their own, each store they have their own credit card. So that is one of the way. So once you have that card, what do you need to consider is what makes someone build a perfect credit? Because without a very good credit, credit score starts with a 300 score, 300 to 800 in the 50. You need to have at least started from 650 going up a little bit, but still that is not good. The more you have very good score will help you with the following things. What are the importance of having good credit score? Number one, will help you to be able to get a loan, whether it will be a car loan, whether it will be a loan for the house, to buy a house. 
it will help you even to go to rent. A landlord, you have to run your credit to see, are you a good tenant? That means you'll be able to pay the money to the landlord or you are not going to pay. If your credit is bad, they are going to put a restriction. If you're going to rent an apartment, they are going to give what you call security deposit, higher security deposit because you are risky. So that is something you need to know. Apart from that, if you want to find a job, they have to run your credit to find if you're a good person in terms of how do you manage your finances. Are you going to take corruption here, take a bribe from people so that you can, or you can steal some things because your credit is bad? So, there are so many things you can, they are going to be done based on the credit. So, this is the game, how to build your credit. When they give you maybe $500 credit uh, limit, number one, it doesn't matter what credit card you have, whether it is a store from Walmart, whether it's from Target, whether it's from bank, whether it's from whatever, just a credit company, it doesn't matter. These are the things. When they tell you this is your credit limit, number one, never use more than 50% of the credit limit. I usually tell people, don't even go more than 20 just not more than 50% if you have to use it. Because immigrants, we do not know what is credit score. What is credit card? How does it operate? They give them 1,500. You go there, you start to go to the movie. You go to the date. You start eating jollof. You start eating whatever. You are eating crazy things. That money, you have to know how to play the game on how to build the credit faster. Number one, don't go and use more over 50%. Because they will know the limit is going down. The more the limit is going down, that means you are you, are, you don't you do not know how to use money. You are spending money on random things. That is how the financial people think. So what you need to do use less than fifty percent. Possible go less than 50, even twenty percent. When you are supposed to pay on a monthly basis, when they say you pay twenty five dollar. Number, number the one thing is never exceed, don't go beyond the de due date. If your debt is every fifth of the month or if every third of the month, make sure that you pay a couple days before that day. That is something to note. And when they tell you the minimum is $25, pay above the minimum, even if above the minimum will be one dollar, it will be two dollars, it will be three dollars. Pay above the minimum because the computer is going to say, oh, this person paid above the minimum. Does that make sense? There are some people that have tricks. They say, I don't know whether it's true. You can pay, uh, if you are you are supposed to pay $50, pay one in the beginning of the month, one before the, deadline, the due date. That means it's, it, it, the computer is going to, like, it's going to take two payments, even if it's going to capture the same uh, minimum, minimum uh, the amount of the minimum we're supposed to do. So don't use the credit to solve your personal problems. Don't use your credit card to go to the movie theater. If you're going to use it, make sure that you have the money to pay back. Because without the credit card, your life in America will be very, very bad. The credit score is going to be ruined. They're not going to do, they're not going to beat you if you don't pay, but it's going to affect your entire life. The interest rate for the home, Interest rate for the car, interest rate for the for the credit card, interest rate for everything is going to be high. And the, what do they do? They usually send these type of letters. This is one among. So this is, uh, so for instance, like they send like the pre-approved credit card. So you, you receive the what we call junk mail. So when you get these cards, like these letters, they say, oh, you have pre-approved for 5,000. Don't just open it and just call them. Oh, I want this 5,000. By doing that way, they are going to run your credit. Anytime they're going to run your credit, your credit is going down. That is hard inquiry. It's going to stay in your credit for two years. You see how problem it is? That means you are going to borrow money to all your neighbors. That's what they say. If you are going to borrow money from all your neighbors in Africa, that means you, you are not trustworthy. You do not know how to use money. You do not know how to handle your money. How are you going to pay? So whatever you go to look with the best, the best credit score, whatever they run your credit, you say, yes, they run your credit using your social security number, you are going to destroy. So once you have one, maximum two credit card, those are more than enough to use them for yourself. 
So you need to know how to build your credit. There are other things like apart from that to pay your normal bills on time, to pay rent on time, to pay water bill on time, to pay your phone bill on time, to take pay the trash. Any bill you have to pay on time. The more you delay, the more it's going to be reported on a monthly basis and you'll be having a bigger impact on your credit life. Without a credit score, they don't care whether you are black, they don't care whether you are white. But the problem is, majority of us, especially immigrants, we are coming here starting from afresh. You are 30 years old, you are 25 years old, you are 35 years old, you have never used it. Using cash it doesn't help you. Yes, you can use cash, but because you don't have the credit score, even if you are just the lowest, it affects you. So once you come here, even if you want to use cash, find credit so that you can use to build your credit. It is a game. You have to perfect it. The more you say, oh, I want to use my cash, I don't want my credit, trust me, it will come to hunt you down. So that is how, what you should, what you should consider when you are getting credit card. Don't go to the multiple companies asking for the credit card because they're going to run your credit, it's going to lower down. Get one or two. Do a research, first of all, and one or two credit will be more than enough. Then start building them. Pay on time. Pay above the minimum. Don't go more than 50% of utilization of the credit limit. But usual best way, don't go even more than 20%. It is a game. Play the game. Raise the score. When you are late to pay the credit, it doesn't matter whether you have a credit limit of one million or your credit limit of fifty dollars. As long as you are late, you are all have the same impact on the credit score. So that is your answer, Liz, about what should I consider getting a credit card for the first time. The first time the credit. Uh, uh, the, the, when you get the credit, they will give the higher what we call the interest rate because you don't have credit here in America. You are starting to establish, they can tell you, you'll be paying 20%. But the more you build and later down the road, you go to ask for the credit credit card, they are going to lower down the, uh, the they are going to lower down the, what we call the, uh, the interest rate. And you can be available to get you so many deals out of that. Okay, what other question? I've already answered uh, that question from Peter. How do you deal with the credit score and how you get even started? I answered that. Uh, okay, Liz, let me send you the invitation. You say you can be able to join. Uh, welcome so much. Let me uh, send you the, uh, the, the, the link. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me send you the link. Sorry. Uh, okay. Okay. So those are the few things you need to understand uh, when we are talking about the. Uh, okay. So let me go to the other question. I'm going to send to you Liz in a minute uh, because I have to send you on my email, and the, then from my email I have to copy and send it to your WhatsApp. Uh, okay. Uh, another question is from uh, from uh, Synthetia Keen. Which state do you live? Uh, currently, I live in the state of I live in the state uh, of Missouri, which is the exactly the center of America. Uh, Kansas. Sometimes you just say I live in Kansas. I live in Missouri because these are two states which are in the middle uh, of America. So let me send you the first of all uh, this one to Liz. Okay, it's in the middle of America. When I came to America for the first time, I was in West Virginia. Uh, I stayed there for one year. I was teaching. Then from West Virginia, I went to, uh, from West Virginia, then I went to uh, California. I lived for, uh, in San Diego, then in nearby LA. Uh, then from there, I moved it to uh, 2016. I moved it to Kansas side. Now I live in the Missouri side. So Kansas and Missouri, they are just in the just. I was, I live in the middle in the Kansas City. So there are Kansas City in the in one side of Kansas. The state of Kansas, the Kansas City in the 
uh, aspect of Missouri. So now I live in the Missouri side. That's where I live. And it is just, uh, and it is just a uh, very affordable state where you can be able to, to live in this kind of state compared to, to live in California, live in, uh, live in, uh, to live in California or to live in what other state like uh, New York, those are the very hardest uh, state to live. Okay. Uh, okay, one question. Okay, there is a question. Uh, the question is from Ganza Muneza Derek Eric. The question is, hello, IBM, how long does it take or how long it took you to get to apply for citizenship in the United States of America. So that question, uh, it depends person to person. But overall, in order to become a United States citizen, you must first be a green card holder. So it takes different time, different whatever someone how long it will take that person to become a green card holder, first of all. For my case, I came as the exchange visitor scholar, as a Fulbright scholar. After being full of one year, I then moved to become an international student. So the second year, then I got married. So I didn't apply my green card right away because I got married. I waited because I was planning to do my PhD at that particular time. So I applied it after one and a half year, years of marriage. So after becoming a green card holder, so it depends what reason, uh, what is the, what, it depends on what was the mode or the way you used to get a green card. If you get a green card by marriage, you have three years to wait in the marriage to become a US citizen. Meaning, first of all, by green card by marriage, Number one is you are given what you call the temporary or conditional green card, two years. If you continue to be married within two years, you are going to be given the 10 years, 10 years green card, just like any other person. So that is number one you need to know. So green card by marriage is three years of marriage. Then you can become a U.S. citizen. Any other type of green card, you will have to wait for five years to become a U.S. citizen. But for my case, after becoming a green card holder, I became a green card holder in 2012. In 2012, I joined the military. I got the citizenship within six weeks after joining the military, after joining the Navy. So you see, it depends on each person, the journey they used. So if you come here, for instance, you are a green card, you are a lottery winner. You come here in the United States uh, today. And within a month, you join the military, you join the Navy, you join the Army, you join the Air Force. That means within two months, you'll become a U.S. citizen because you're already a green card holder. So those are the few things you can be able to consider uh, what journey. But the journey from whatever type of visa you have to become a U.S. citizen, I mean, whatever type of visa to become a green card holder, that can be shorter or longer depending on each person way they have used it to join the uh to join to become a green card holder but again remember united states allows uh, dual citizenship so if you become a us citizen you want to become a us citizen you have to consider the laws of your country there are some countries they don't allow dual citizenship for instance uh uh you, uh, Tanzania doesn't allow dual citizenship. So when I decided to become a U.S. citizen, obviously you have to abandon it. You have to completely you are denying your citizenship of other country. So if your country allows dual citizenship, that is an easy decision. If it doesn't allow, you have to figure out what am I going to gain, what am I going to lose if I become a U.S. citizen. I have a video I've explained a lot of benefits of someone uh, to become uh, a U.S. citizen. There are so many benefits someone needs to understand you can be able to do, but mostly related to the jobs, uh, security, and other things. But it depends on what you really like and what you want in your life. Okay, just one minute. Uh, 
I still have a problem. I don't know why my phone has a network problem. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, so let me go to the question. Liz, wait a minute. The link is coming, but I'm having a problem with my network on the cell phone. Okay, uh, Peter uh, Damulira, Peter, you said uh, you said you joined the army, but it's not army, I joined the navy. In, I know many countries, when we say army, we refer the military. Army here is a branch. Uh, you said you joined the army, but at the same time, you did general labor. I thought if I joined the army, I would not need to, uh, to get the general labor and get a professional job. Remember, in America, I was in the military. I'm not in the military. Uh, I, when I came in America, I didn't just come to America today as international student or uh, exchange scholar and then just join the military. While you are in the military, yes, you don't need to do another general labor. But what if before you join? That's number one. And what if after leaving that particular job? So, yes, I, when I was in the military, I didn't do any other of general labor. General labor was full-time uh, uh, the uh, person working with the military, I was active duty. So I was I was not able to do any other type of jobs. But out before that and after the military, I did other the general labor and also I had to get other professional jobs. Okay, what's wrong with my email today? I mean, my internet. Okay, I'm sorry, Liz. I don't know what's going on. Okay. Uh, okay, I don't know what's going on with my internet on the phone. Okay, let me go to another question. This question is from Daniel Giamfi. The question is, good day, EBM. I'm Daniel from Ghana. I want to ask you after joining the military and getting different job, what is your net salary? Yeah, I said myself, I needed the personal questions. So these are personal questions. So number one, when you are in the military, I'll give just the high level, the how much you probably going to make in terms of the salary. How much are you going to make? Uh, so when you are joining as enlisted, it doesn't matter what branch. I'm saying more enlisted because you are not going to join as office unless otherwise you become a U.S. citizen first. So the best way would be joining as enlisted. So uh, if you have, let's say, some college courses, you have a diploma or something like that. So you start with the, the ranks start with from E1 to E9 for enlisted. For the officers, O1 to O, whatever, 10. So on the enlisted side, so if you can start E1, E2, E3, E4, whatever, and going up, but most likely when you start, you start with E1 or E2. E3, when you have some, some few courses of the college, uh, even if you haven't completed, you can start with E3. But if you are, let's say, joining the army as a branch, you start with E4, while with the same education on in every and other branches that is E3. So let's start, you are starting with E3. E3, the salary is about 2,000 US dollar per month. So you get $2,000 per month. And then remember, if you are single, you have free accommodation. You live on the barracks. So that is going to save over 1,000 US dollar. Depending which 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 region you live or which 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 state or city you live, if you are in California, they have saved over one thousand five hundred. So add that one in your mind that that is extra part of your salary. So they give the salary and they give the benefits. One of the benefits is the amount you are going to be given. So you get at least one thousand five hundred. If you are married, you are given the actual cash and you find where you are going to find the apartment on your own. Or you can go to the military housing, which are very nice and beautiful homes, and they give you 
uh, the money to pay for this housing. So San Diego, for instance, it was 1,000. At that time I was there, I was, it was 1,885. So average nearby 2,000. So you get 2,000 for the salary. You get housing, for instance, if you are married or you have kids, you get another 2,000. And then because I was, I was able, I mean, I speak Swahili, I take the exam, I was paid 500 extra on that. So that is five, uh, 500 is 4,500. Then each month I was given 300 for food. But if you are go eating on base, it's going to go back to the base, something like that. So if you calculate, you are going to get at least 4,000 and above, which is a very decent amount of money. Plus you have very good benefits as a person in the, in the military. So those are some of the things which are were, were happening. So if you take those, those kind of amount, that's why I tell people it is better to come here in the U.S. and join the military. Why is it better? Because once you come here and join the military, you start with a decent job of more, almost nearby 4,000. But when you come as immigrant, you cannot just go and start doing cleaning and you get 4,000. If you work one full-time job, maximum can you get to be 2,000. Because you get, let's say, $10 per hour or $50 per hour times 40 hours per week times 160 hours per month. So those are the things you need to, those are the things you need to consider or to check when you are coming. That's why you encourage people to go to join the military. And if you are immigrant, once you have you serve the military, there are other benefits on top of that. Like what if you get out, is it to get a good job? So if you start the military, the amount of the money you'll be able to make, you'll be able to make 40,000 per year to nearby 50,000, depending on how you are going to, 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 to do that. Uh, but again, uh, when you get out, depending what is your profession now, the ball game was, is changing. So how what type of job, if you are going to study medical or you are a nurse, that will be different from one person to another person. So those are the things I can be able to say, but you'll be able to make it for starting at around 40,000 per year to 50,000 if you start you work in the military. So those are the advantages. Uh, currently, I make more than that. So, which is, I mean, it's not more like, but I look like what other benefits of the freedom I have is someone is working uh, myself is overall just like independent. Uh, I have certain kind of freedom than being in the military, but I still get all the benefits of like someone who were, was able to serve in the U.S. military. Liz, I believe the uh, I have sent to you a WhatsApp. Now it has gone. I had to uh, to restart my 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 phone. I think there is something going on. Okay. There is a good question from Steve Makawa. Steve Makawa is saying, I'm psychologist EBM. How well does it do as a profession in the United States? So this is a very good example of the professions usually I tell people. Not all the professions, when you come here, you are directly going to do uh, well here in America. They don't translate everything direct to what is America is going to do. Why I'm saying that way? There are a few things. Number one, if you have to work as a psychologist in America, you have to do certification. You have to be a certified person. There are Because there are certain regulations on how to keep the secret of people, the conduct, so you have to take the, just like people in CPA, like lawyers, they have to do the bar exam. So psychologists, they have their license here. So you don't just jump here and you start doing counseling and doing psychologist thing. So you have to get the license to operate. So that's number one. Number two, in order to do that, remember, I do, I do not know, uh, Steve Makawa, which country you are from, but just, I don't want to be uh, so prejudiced, but your name is more African name. So I assume, let's say you are coming from Africa like me. You cannot just, because you study psychology, 
from the University of KwaZulu Natal in South Africa or Kenyatta University or Nairobi University or from the university, one university in Nigeria or in Ghana, then you can come here and start do psychology for, for Americans. No, no, my friend. We have different culture. You have to learn the culture and the practice of here on how things are working in order to cancel someone here. Let me give you an example. Let's go. You were born, raised, and your understanding about women's rights and how women are supposed to gender and how women are supposed to be treated. Your exposure is maybe in the village, then you go to the town, have your degree. You come here, a woman comes to the house over there and they say, I want to have a break from my, from, from my husband because my husband doesn't cook. My husband doesn't wash dishes. For you, with your background, you say, what? You want your man to your, your husband to wash dishes, but because but here is something expected for a man to do certain things, so you cannot just come here and start cancelling. My advice will be if you want to do some psychology and the other thing when you come here, if you have bachelor degree, do a master's and go and do the certification, get the license. While you are doing studies, you'll be able to learn the principles of psychology here and how the culture. While you are studying that one, you'll be able to learn the culture and be able to do what you're supposed to do. Just like a lawyer. Let's say, oh, EDM, I'm just here in Morovia. I studied, I have bar exam, I'm a lawyer here. Yes. But the constitutional law in your country is practically different of constitutional law here in America. How the practice of the constitutional law? There are so many complications about the federal, state, about the seat. There are so many complications. Congress, is, uh, uh, when we talk about houses, Senate, power of the president, is a very complicated things. So when it comes to the Constitution. So my advice is don't just jump because you just psychology there, you can come here and start doing psychology. No, you need to learn the culture. You need also to get the license so that you can be more effective to help other people while you are here. And again, something else. You might come here, not necessarily you have to practice what you studied. You might come here and you see there are so many other opportunities you can be able to do. Maybe you, want to, you come, you see there's opportunity to start your own business on Amazon and start a business on eBay. So don't come with the mindset, I must, bet, I must be employed and I must be employed on the same or similar job ex uh, experience or the certain kind of background I have. No, it's not a must. You can come here and say, oh, if I do psychology, I'll be paid maybe 3,000 per month or 4,000 per month. But if I do, I go to study nursing, why should I study masters? If I do nursing, I can be paid 7,000 or 9,000 per month. Minimum, minimum, minimum payment per hour, maybe $40 per hour is a nurse, registered nurse. Why should I go to work for eighteen dollar per hour or twenty five dollar per hour with my masters? While if it's a nurse, I can make it more than that. So come with the mindset which is open that you are able to do any type of job, or you can be able to change experience. You can be able to start your own company. You can do business. You can be able to invest. So come with that mindset which can be able to help you. But in order to succeed here, don't come here and start getting the student loan. They'll give you the loan. Don't come here and just study, okay, I have to study this. It might be, for instance, if you study MBA, Masters of Business Administration, in your countries is a big deal. Here it is not a big deal. That is bad news for you. Oh, I said human resources. Yes, it might, it might pay in your country. Human resources is just a normal thing here. I said the political science. So what are you going to do? Are you going to be a congressman? Are you going to be a congresswoman? Are you going to be a senator? No. So don't come with what is working in your country that is a good job. This is a good profession. Directly assuming that if you come here, it will give you the same kind of status, the same kind of the, I'm a banker. So if you're a banker, go and work at the bank. Someone can have just a bachelor degree in IT and the bachelor degree in IT is getting paid more than someone with a PhD in the political science.
This is America. So come here and find the things which will be able to work for you well. So come with the mindset, open mindset, like I'm going to find all these opportunities and I'm going to utilize them. Okay. There is another question related to the military from uh, Peter, uh, Damu, Damu Lila Peter. Is the Navy, being in the Navy, are you always deployed at sea? Doesn't it mean that uh, Navy deploy in the war zone? That is a very good question. Well, I was planning to join the military, I had to consider what uh, best option for me. Yes, when you are in the Navy, you are stationed in the ship. Your command is the ship. Yes, there are certain times you have the uh, duty of, of shore, I mean, like in the normal building kind of station there. But most of your career will be in the ship. So for me, I was stationed in the ship in destroyer type of the ship, which is above about 300 people in that one. Uh, guided missile destroyer DDG uh, uh, 880 Prebo. Now that ship has moved from the station of San Diego to Hawaii. So, if you are stationed with that ship, all your deployments will be in the sea, unless otherwise you are in the navy. But there are certain type of certain type of job within the navy you can be deployed on ground if you are. For instance, you are uh, we call CBs. There are those they are working is uh, construction, so they can go to Mali to any African country, wherever they can be able to work in the base. But in most cases, if you are in the sh in the ship, you will be deployed in the ocean. So if you are in the Pacific Ocean, like for instance, I was stationed in San Diego, so Pacific Ocean, the deployments is in the Pacific Ocean. Like you are going, we went to Japan, we went to uh, Australia, you are going to went to Palau, we went to. Uh, South Korea, we're we about to go to uh, where Philippines, but we take a U-turn, we can see Philippines is there, and we received a call, I mean, the ship received a call, or new orders, don't go to Philippines, turn a, a ship, go to South Korea. So we went to Guam, all those countries, so we are de deploying those areas. If you were stationed in the uh, uh, Atlantic Ocean, whatever, uh, if you are stationed in uh, Virginia, uh, for instance, um, which they have more ships. If you stationed in uh, uh, Pensacola in Florida, in those areas you are going to be deployed in most like going to Europe or Middle Eastern, but in the ocean side. So yes, most of the time you are not in the typical war zone compared to if you are army, if you are the Marines, because army and the Marines, they are actual in the boots in the ground. Or if you are a Navy SEAL, yes, you'll be put in the ground. But the Navy, you can be deployed in a certain area. For instance, when uh, you can be deployed in South Korea, stationed if something happened in North Korea, to be sent by to fight back or to be able to protect. So you don't go direct to North Korea. No, we don't do that. So in my opinion, Navy is one among this. If you want, you want the safer branch, not to be in the typical war zone, go with the Navy. There is that advantage of being kind of safer side. But if you want more action, you have to go to army, you have to go to marines, or if you are going to the navy, there are certain type of jobs which can put you there, like SWIC, which is a special force, part of the special uh, warfare. Uh, SWIC and the uh, and the navy seal, they are there. Uh, they will be able to do that. And even sometimes the divers are going to the typical war zone, depending on where the war is. Okay. Okay, there is a question from uh, Salome Fikri uh, from Tigray. Tigray, I believe, is in Ethiopia. I know there is a complication now in Ethiopia with the Tigray uh, part. So what is your job in the United States country right now? And how much wage or how much money do you make per hour? That's a very good question. So currently, 
I work with a nanny profit, uh, which this nanny profit works in uh, 19 countries around the world. And in Africa, we work in Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda, Madagascar, uh, and Rwanda. Five countries in Africa. We work in India. We work in Asia. Uh, in Asia, we I mean India and uh, and the Philippines. And we work also with the uh, the rest of the countries are in Latin America. So I work as director for Africa. Uh, so all these five countries. That is my current job. But this is what YouTube, uh, writing books, posting them online, free, whatever. These are things which I do for fun or things which I do on the side. But this is not the main job. So that's why even like during the day right now, if I have to be online, I'm doing online during my lunch break. Uh, and then I have to compensate the hours after, uh, after that time. How much money do you make per hour? So this is how it is about to get paid. Not everybody is paid per hour. There are two types of work or way how we get paid here you can work direct as your job we said your per hour job is if you work is 15 dollar per hour they can tell you from the beginning or they can tell you your job is 20 dollar per hour meaning if you don't go to work you, you don't get if there is no you, if there is no work you don't get paid but if i work so there are those people who work like me i work on what we call uh, the salary is put into annual basis. So you say someone, oh, I make $60,000 per year. I make $70,000 $70, per year. I make $80,000 per year. So there are some people they work, make certain amount of money per year. So, but even if they say per year, that means that amount of money is divided into 26 times because we get paid every other two, other, so just like two weeks per year. So it's just like 26 pay periods. So if it took 26 times two, it's going to be 52, whatever kind of that, whatever 54, but the payment in, in so, because there are certain weeks, there are five weeks in a month, there are certain months they have just four weeks normal. So, but if you go to the human resources, how they count, you get paid 26 times in a year. So for me, I get paid, so my salary is on annual basis. So let's say, if there is no today, a tough snow, and I'm not, uh, they say, oh, today we aren't working, I still get paid. If it's 4th of July, and obviously we are not working, I still get paid because I get paid on the annual basis. Or then annual basis is going to be divided into every two weeks that I, I get paid. But there are people who are working on, specifically on per hour. So per hour depends. Uh, it depends on the set, depending on the type of the job which you are going to make, and especially with experience. But I usually advise people, when you come here in America, uh, the first type of jobs, if you want to find, which will be paying you well to start a job, find jobs in the warehouse, especially on Amazon, for instance. In all states in America, the Amazon warehouse or Amazon in general, the minimum wage they start to pay per hour, fifteen dollar per hour, which is a good amount of money because some of the jobs or some of the sets you can start with nine or ten. So, but if you go to you get with Amazon, oh, there are a few companies their minimum minimum wage is fifteen dollar. So there are some people they make up to fifty dollar per hour, depending on the type of the job which you are talking about. But overall, uh, uh. And if you have green card, you're allowed to have two jobs. You're allowed to have a full-time job, which is uh, paid on the annual basis. You can go and find another job, which you can be able to work on as Uber. You can be able to work as just in the restaurant. You can be able to work on any other. So they don't limit you. If you have green card, you are not limited to work to only with your employer. You can work as many employment employers you want. You can make as many hours you want. It doesn't affect anything. You are good wherever you want. That is something you need to know. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Abdiwali Muhammad Farah. I'm a doctor. Can I work there as a doctor? Yes, you can work as a doctor. But remember, you can work as a doctor. Working as a doctor, you have to get a certification in America. 
You don't just come here and just start injecting people. You have to be a doctor here in America. You have to get the certification and get everything to be able to practice. Because you studied maybe tropical diseases, you cannot just come here and start doing you have to do like lawyers, engineers. There are certain profession you have to get a certification. Welcome, Liz. Thank you. I was just, <laughs> I wasn't ready, but I decided to just chip in and just say hi. You know, when you work from home, you don't, <laughs> you just wake up and you throw on a sweat and you go and work. <laughs> exactly. That's the advantage of working from home. Yeah. What I have, I have. A lot of uh, what the a lot of the tops like so I put like just like <laughs> so for, because most of the time we are, we are in the video so my meeting is like a video so obviously you have to wear so you can wear the same trouser or whatever the pajama so we just change this one <laughs> yeah because anytime you may get a video call <laughs> yeah yeah so the question is mm -hmm. someone is asking is he a doctor can he work or she work as a doctor direct from Africa and come here to become a doctor? Um, so that that is difficult because usually for the professionals, I don't know how I'm holding the camera. Uh, okay, maybe like this. Okay. So the, the professional jobs like being a doctor, lawyers, and all these other very nice jobs, those ones you have to really add on some uh, studies, some certificates. So when you get here, you go back into school and you make sure you earn the credit for that because it is difficult. I have friends that have come, that, that were previously lawyers in Uganda and when they came here, they couldn't do that. You have yeah. to go back to school and prove your worth and prove that you know, you're know you a good lawyer and you know what you're doing. So that is this uh, difficult part, but it's not so bad. I was telling my friend, if you're a lawyer, you're already practicing start as a paralegal, paralegal yes start paralegal as a paralegal, get to understand the system in the u.s how they operate and then from there get the money go back to school keep empowering yourself and eventually who knows after four or five years you will become an actual lawyer just build that credibility so that the companies trust you that you have worked in the states that you have worked here as a paralegal just and because the systems are different you just first of all want to understand how to operate here so you start low then you can uh later rise above and for anyone that is watching first of all check me out as well yeah i wish you had posted my link in the chat so people can subscribe to my channel as well i share uh things to do with uh, a few things also about the visa uh stories and also you know basically just encouragement and how to be able to when you come here how to expect and <laughs> all these things <laughs> i'm going to post you a link in a minute here on the okay chat. i yeah. think i think yes for the doctor that is i don't know if that is helpful yes because uh even if let's say they allow you to go into practice that is the link for Liz, uh, her channel, Roll With Liz. She has a very good interviews with so many people. People who are here, people who are not here. You can be able to get a perspective from so many other people, not just EBM. Uh, sometimes I might be giving some things which is my experience. There are some people that have other experience, which is good to get from different perspective. Yes. Uh, and yeah, so, but that is it. I was today. saying, like, and if they allow you to become, mm -hmm. let's say, a doctor, mm -hmm. the point oh, is, her. The, uh, the technology you use it to operate someone completely here you can go there and it's something you were just reading on the notes but here is high tech maybe you needed to know how to use it uh yes. again uh there are certain things i mean equipment wise is different and then the, uh, the there are uh there are certain type of diseases maybe they're not here which you practice there mm -hmm. for instance if you are doing tropical diseases not many states they have hospitals with the tropical diseases. So there are very, very few areas or centers they deal with the tropical diseases. Like you cannot treat someone with malaria. There's no malaria here. So those are the few things you need to 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 think about it. Yeah. Yes, I, and that is very true because my cousin who is in Germany said they had never seen somebody who had 
I think she said the ulcers, like stomach ulcers. So at first they didn't understand what her issue was. <laughs> and then she was suffering, explaining, and they were diagnosing. And until I think she, I don't know, I think a certain doctor figured it out. So some, some diseases, like you said, yep. are not very common here. People don't have malaria. People don't have... Um, yeah. So many of these other things that we may be used to treating back home. <laughs> I want to give you something funny about doctors. Some you go to the doctor and say you have maybe you have stomach ache. They ask instead of treating you, say, did you did you drink the water from the ocean? Did you sleep this way? Like how? Like like just God. <laughs> so there are so many diagnoses which we, in our context they work perfect. Yeah. If you come here. They might not, those concepts might not operate, like cannot be able to be applicable in our context. Mm -hmm. So it's better to come here. And even if you are allowed, just learn the culture. You mm -hmm. are a lawyer, yes, learn the, the law here, like the culture, like you, you are just like, you, I mean, there are so many things you need to learn about everything. Yeah. Um, let me drop off quickly. I'll come back. You no. Can... Okay. okay. Okay, uh, let me go to another question. Uh, Elizabeth, thank you so much. Uh, I was not planning to answer any question in other th than asking me. Yes, all the documents must be in English. So you have to translate. Yeah. Okay, uh, Peter, you are asking a question. Getting a professional job and starting your own business, which one is easier in the United States? Keeping the credit score in mind. That is a very good question, basically. Uh, first of all, I want to make sure you understand when you say professional job. Uh, being professional job doesn't mean that you make more money. You need to know that. Myself, I'm director of the one of the organizations for one section of Africa. I make more money, almost see the same or a little bit higher than my nephew. My nephew works in the warehouse, but he's taking two shifts. So he makes money almost like me. So it doesn't first of all, what is the purpose? The purpose is the rank, the title, or the purpose is how much money are you going to make? So don't come here and say, I want to make it as a profession. I'm going to work in the bank. I'm a banker. I'm working. If, for instance, someone who is working at, at the bank, let's say they, I don't know whether you call it a professional bank teller. I don't know whether it's a profession or not a profession. But here, bank teller make, get like $10, 12 per hour, $15 per hour top. It's not a lot of money. But someone can work on the nursing home, helping those uh, elderly people and make $30 per hour, $25 per hour. So come with the mindset, first of all, professional job doesn't mean more payment. There are certain jobs can be hardworking, general labor, but it's more tech. I mean, or more energy, need more energy, or need certain kind of skills, they'll pay more. That's number one. Number two is, when you come here, as I've been saying, you cannot just come here if you can, you can become a supervisor. When you come here, you don't just come here because I was a uh, uh, program manager on my company. I come here, I become a program manager too. No, you're not going to become a program manager. You have to start, what do we say, the general labor. It's not a general labor. means you can work in the restaurant. You can work at the... Maybe we can look at on the whatever these uh uh let's say in the on the stores or in the malls, you can be working as cashiers, you can be working as someone who is talking products uh into the into the into I mean into the supermarkets, you can be working at the gas station, you can be working uh at for instance, if you can work, I'm giving example into these shipping companies. You can so there are so many things. For instance, the person who is driving trucks. 
the truck drivers, yeah, these big trucks, those ones, they make money almost more than registered in S. And you, don't, you need to have high school because it is a, you travel one state to another state and whatever, they make up to $100,000 per year. And someone can have high school. So you can have master's degree, make 50,000, and you can have high school, you can make 100,000. The choice is yours. What are you able to do? So don't assume that, oh, I have to make a professional job so that I can make, okay, truck driver, if you call it, is a profession, is a truck driver, but if you don't consider it as a high class job, yes, it's important to look at a fancy job, but you can make a lot of money. Obviously, to start your own business in America is very, very hard. It is easier. Yes, you can start selling things on Amazon, but it's different like in Africa. Let me start uh, keeping uh, maybe 1,000 1, chicken. Then I can sell eggs and get money. Who? How many people are going to buy your product? You cannot go and do the forever living or take the cold gate and start selling in the street and get more money. It's very difficult. In the bigger cities like New York City, yes, you can have a small kiosk and make money. I agree. But the business here, remember, and almost every business you're going to operate, they have a multi-million dollar companies that have invested in those business. So yes, it is easy to go and start doing online business like you want to do the eBay, you are doing Amazon. Those will be able to easy to start because you can be starting selling depending on how you can be able to learn quick and to know what type of product, what time to upload those kind of products, what type of prices you can be able to learn on Amazon, on YouTube, and start doing those kind of business. That is easy. But to say I'm going to start my own shop, I'm going to start my own restaurant, that is a very difficult one because you need to have a very big or bigger amount of startup capital. And in order to get a loan, you have to get good credit. How are you going to have a startup fund? So that's why majority of immigrants, we, ended up, we are ending up working. And down the road, we are starting our own business. Because to start the business right away from the beginning is very, very tough. So getting a professional job, one, you need to build your own work experience in America. That's why when you come here, you will start cleaning. You will start working in the warehouse. You will start working at the cashier. You will start working in the mall. You will start working here. Just the jobs like those ones. And slowly you become supervisor, manager. You can apply from one job to another job. But it will take a couple of years for you to be having a solid work experience of America, not from your own country. The first thing they'll look at here, unless otherwise the job you are going to apply, the job you are going to get, it has to also link your work experience from your other country. For instance, if they need someone who speaks Swahili, obviously your experience teaching Swahili in Tanzania or Kenya will help you to get that one. But if they are looking for someone who is more expert on something, your experience from other countries might not be able to, to work very well. Welcome back, Liz. <laughs> Thank you. I'm back. <laughs> I decided to look nice. Okay. <laughs> People will say, hey, what's wrong with this lady? Okay, let me find a question for you first of all. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, there is that question which I've answered. Uh, uh, and uh, someone was saying, is it easy to get uh, getting professional job when you start your own business? I said, starting business is difficult because you need to have a lot of money to start with. Good credit and you are brand new is very difficult to start with. But you can start with the Amazon, uh, on eBay. Those you can start on smaller products on your own. But to start, like, let me start African restaurant, you need to have like a rent for the, that building, which is supposed to be high because it's a nice area. You have to have cooking equipment. And if you get the loan, you have to have your own fund and you have to get good credit to get. So those are the things I was explaining. And I was explaining, like, sometimes you might say, oh, I want the nice job, professional job. But I said, my nephew is working at Walmart uh, Center, but he works two shifts. So he's at two jobs. He makes more money, or almost. I mean, I'm the amount I'm, I'm what I saw. I was checking the tax return, like how much is going is, is making. 
And to me, the difference is it was like five, five to it was seven thousand. But for me, I'm director. So sometimes a professional job doesn't mean that you make more money. As I was saying, like my 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 sister-in-law, uh, her husband is just high school, but when they moved here, he just decided to become a truck driver. Went to truck school. He's making more than a hundred thousand per year, and he's a truck driver. Yeah, that's the beauty here. You even if you're not going to school so much, as long as you have a skill that you can use, that is the beauty. You can do anything. And you can have as many jobs as you can, depending on your level <laughs> of health and, you know, if you can manage. For example, I was, I don't know if I told you, I am doing two jobs, for example. Yeah. I do my regular job at home, and then when I'm done, I do another job in the evening, every now and again. So the thing is, you're not limited to anything here. So... Um, if, for example, if you didn't know, if you have in, in Uganda or in Tanzania, maybe, do you say senior four? Like if you don't have a high school diploma, even if, even if you don't have it, but you have been a driver and you have that skill that you can use when you come here, you can, for example, drive for companies like Amazon, uh, like all these regular big companies, you can drive for them and you get good money, like $17 an hour. 15 an hour and then from there you have your experience then you can have you you can be good you just have to know that here you have to work you cannot come here and live at someone's house like it is back home yeah you just have and to work that is that, like that's why you get you brought us again the same we were thinking the same like in amazon amazon they have the federal for them federally in a state the minimum payment minimum per hour is 15 dollars so it's a good company to start with. So you can, for instance, I'm giving an example. Where, where I am, there's a lot of smaller Amazon uh, warehouses. So I can go to work in where, warehouse one. I can work full time in the afternoon. And I can go to work, if you have energy, you can work on another Amazon uh, for full time in the night. Whatever, depending on whatever you do, how do you want to do, but it's eight hours, eight hours. So if you do that, you're going to make... Uh, Almost five thousand per month. Yeah, but it's up to you. The choice is yours. So you can say, should I make two jobs if I have energy, or should I wait and become uh, a manager on a certain organ because I'm just a manager, and then get a uh, smaller percent because you can wear a tie if you want to wear a tie in the bank. <laughs> Those jobs here, people don't even wear ties like in 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 Uganda. How people like to look smart. People just put on T-shirts and they go to work. And <laughs> when, you, when you wear a tie, so is there any interview? What's so special? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? So, are there any other questions that we could yeah. talk about? Okay, there is this one from Cole. Uh, I'll, I'll 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 start to answer, and then you can be able to add in. Uh, Okay, call your question is what should I do if I cannot afford a down payment of a house in America? Is there any other way of getting a house? So, uh, three things. First of all, in order to buy a house, you need to have uh, good credit, number one. Number two, you need to have good income. And then the down payment part. Before the market crash back in 2008, 2009, one of the reasons why there was a big problem in that particular year, among other reasons, it happened if someone is working at McDonald's for $12 per hour, can go and be given the house for a half a million dollar home. But in the end, they cannot afford. But they didn't pay about the down payment, whatever. So there was that. It was a down payment, but it was not too much required. But after that market crash, it is almost complicated to apply and to get the home without the payment. So what other ways can you be able to do? One of the shortcuts is just joining the military. I joined the military. So for instance, for me, I purchased this home and I just sometimes make the video. This is my home, whatever you say is nice. How much money did I pay? I paid 1000 US dollar just for the cost of inspection. And then I got the house key. So I didn't pay the down payment of 20, 30,000. I didn't pay that. I just paid 1,000 
for the inspection. So you see the advantage of shortcut joining the military, it gives you that opportunity. But there are other opportunities too. For instance, there are some of the states or some of the cities in the rural areas, sometimes of the state, they encourage people to go to those states. They can even give you a free land or they can pay you while they say they, if you are student loan, they're not, you don't pay as long as you build the home here. So you have to look like if you are okay to, and the future should be okay because people can work from home. You can be able to go into even like a Wichita in the middle of Kansas, whatever there, you can be there and you can be able to do that. So there are certain states, they encourage people to move to those states or those cities. You have to look at those one. And then there are some of the, uh, some of the programs, like if you are the first time home buyer and maybe you are the first generation of whatever this kind of forever, you have this income, you can be allowed to be forgiven, not to be paying the down payment of this amount. Maybe you'll pay, instead of paying 20%, you will be pay 5%. So there are certain kind of programs, but they are not a lot to qualify to be able to get those kind of uh, programs to get the uh, to get the down payment or not to pay the down payment. But basically, that's why many people, they delay to buy the house because you have to get an uh, apartment uh, to get the down payment. This will be one of the pure examples. Uh, you can, from January to December, you might end up not having even $1,000 extra cash here in America. It's normal. Because the money you get after tax, after everything, you have to pay for the, uh, if you have vehicle or loan, you have uh, apartment or you would have, you have to pay for this. So almost the whole amount of money you get this month is going out with all the bills which I already planned for. <laughs> so it's very difficult to say I'm going to save 20,000. Yeah. What is your question on that? That is true. So for the person that wants to buy a house but doesn't have enough down payment, you can have, there are a few options like BM has said, but if you have somebody that can sponsor you, for example, if I have a trusted, I wouldn't say friend, maybe family. Yeah. If you have like a family that you trust, they can co-sign okay. with you. So when they co-sign, they appear on the title or on the house loan. So you have, you have, you have like three people, you co-sign, so you co-own the house for the period of time. Then there is what they call um, readjustment. Is it readjustment? I don't know if that's... Uh, the, um, uh, I forget the actual... But, but what it means is you are going to pay off the other people that actually paid with you at the start to own the house yeah. So you pay a bigger, um, you pay a sum of money. Then if you want to get rid of the people that helped you sponsor you at the start, you pay. So if, you, if you've been working and you've saved up enough money, that is when it happens. So uh, get this amount of money, call the bank and say you want to do, um, I forget what they call refinance. it. A, a resetter, what? Refinance. Refinance. Thank you. My English is not the best <laughs> I can forget, but that is what it is. So you refinance, and when you refinance, you can get rid of the other people, but of course you'll have an agreement with them in person. For example, if they lend you like $5,000, have that in-person agreement with the other two people or one person. So they're going to lend, in, in actual sense, they are lending you that money so that you can own the house. Then eventually after maybe one year or two, you pay them off. You kind of give them the money, then you also pay the bank, and that way you can own the house on your own. Although this is quite challenging, because if you cannot own a house, just wait, just keep renting. Yeah. Because if you lose the job that is helping you finance, pay the loan each month, you're going to lose that house, and it won't be yeah. very nice. So for the start, I would say if you don't have that hard cash or any assets to buy the house, to pay the down payment, it shouldn't be a problem. Just keep renting, pay apartments, and then accumulate the enough down payment, and then you can buy a house. And you can also move to states that are really cheaper. You some don't need to stay up in California just to look like you're in California. Yes, yeah, some states are so unaffordable. They are so expensive for no reason. So you can always move around. It's not like in, in Africa or in Uganda where you buy a house and you own the land, you own everything. 
when you buy a house here, it doesn't matter. You can sell it in one week and you go somewhere else. You yeah. move to uh, Kansas, you move to Texas. So that is the beauty. So I, I, that is what would be my advice. If you really, really want a house, get a sponsor, get somebody that can help pay for the start, and then you can get rid of them and refinance and continue with the house. And that also, also would a, have to be a trusted person. And also there is a program called Rent to Own. Okay. So you rent the house, you rent, and then you are coming to own. So in the end, that you don't pay down payment on that. Okay. So you have to um, find specific homes with that program. Okay. So you let me to, take yeah. this call. I'll okay. be back. Okay. So don't just go and just rent any house. No. There is a proper way of renting to own. Okay. Uh, there is a question from Bonfest Gervas from Kasulu Kigoma. Where did uh, where did where did you where are you from? Or how did you uh, how could you some um, get full scholarship to study in America? Yes, myself I'm also from Kigoma, but uh, I'm not from Kasulu. I live. I was born and raised in Kigoma town in Tanzania, but my parents are not far from Kasulu in Kasumo area uh, in Kigoma too. So, uh, how to get a scholarship depends on the level. So, there is a video which I explain in detail about how to get scholarships. Uh, whether it be bachelor, but I explain the challenges of getting a scholarship for bachelors, whether it will be master's, and whether it will be PhD. And I explain the challenges for get, in order to get scholarships for specifically for America, because America has extra exams in order to do that. For instance, if you are talking about master's or PhD, you have to take the TOEFL or the English proficiency, either TOEFL or ILTs. In addition to that, you have to take the uh, the GRI or GMAT or MCAT, depending on the program. But in Europe, you have to take one exam only, the English proficiency test in order to do. So when it comes to the resources, there is that aspect. So I don't know why you say to study in America particular, because if you want to study in America in particular, there are those kind of things will be able to affect you. In terms of the resources in America, you have to pay for uh, application fee, uh, but in Europe there is no application fee. So you see, you can consider all those kind of things when you want to start. Where should you apply? Because you cannot apply one university and wait for opportunity. Uh, so those are the few things you need to uh, to consider when you are applying. But the full video uh, is or he, I mean, is just you can just go to my channel. You can be able or go to my on my channel on the on the top, there is areas written, uh, play, uh, playlist. If you click playlist, there are scholarships for America. There are scholarships for Europe. You can be able to get all the guidelines specifically. And if you're looking for master's or PhD, there is a free book, uh, free ebook, uh, which I've posted on my, uh, I can post again here. Uh, EBM. If you go to the website called ebmscholarships.com, uh, the first post, which I posted a few minutes ago, uh sorry uh so the first post which i've posted on my ebm scholarship uh so i'm going to post this one if you go there is a free ebook there which talks specifically to study in america so go and download that link is a free ebook you can be able to get that one so i'm sure that one will be able to help you uh Lauren, uh, you were asking how long were, uh, uh, I said, EBA, how EBM, you were in the Navy for how long? I was in the Navy for about two, two and a half years instead of four years. Uh, Agana Blessing News, you were asking the DV lotteries for only US or any other, uh, other ones. No, any other country on the planet Earth has a DV lottery, only United States. Uh, Linda Nguenya. Linda Nguenya, you're asking, hello, what do you do for a living? I've already answered a similar question that I work with a nanny profit uh, here in the United States as director for that nanny profit, but for the Africa section. So uh, that's what I do for a living is a full-time job. But on the side, I just do enjoy writing books. Uh, and the other few things I able to uh, I am able to do that. So those are the few things uh, I, I do right now. 
Okay. Uh, but you can be able to do uh, so many other things. You can be able to do to earn income. You can be able to work. At the same time, you can be able to do business or you can be able to do Uber. You can be, there are so many things you can be able to do on the side to help you survive. Okay, so I have to finish in uh, five minutes. Uh, my daughter is awake. And I have to go. Uh, you are asking. I don't want to answer this kind of question. Love, love. Uh, there is a video. I put everything. Like if you go to EBM Scholars DSC 260, there is that form. I work on my screen answering each question. And I've been able to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Abdullah, and even you just, just decided to close your eyes, look for me for a wife over there. <laughs> uh, you are asking if I'm able to share the particulars. I prefer not the phone number because the phone number has been a very problem for many people. People have been calling me anytime, so I, now I have a different number. So I'm going to send the uh, Telegram group. You can be able to check me uh, on Telegram group. Liz already answered about the lottery question. Can a green card holder uh, have a mortgage uh, of a home in the United States? Yes, uh, Elizabeth, you are allowed. There is no problem with that. Uh, yeah, thank you, Liz, for helping to... Liz also answered the question about the mortgage. <coughs> So I'm about to finish everyone and I will go. Uh, Hello, sir. Do I need a police currency from the US because I've been there for more than six months a few years ago? Yes, you need it too. So uh, I have to end. Uh, what is the easiest job to get to do as a new migrant, uh, Annette? Uh, I, I'm planning to do that kind of uh, uh, video, uh, but the easy one, you can go and work in the warehouse, work in the uh, retail warehouse. Like there are so many jobs in the warehouse. There are so many jobs in the retail, like oh, in the supermarkets, these malls where there are so many jobs in those, uh, which we call like some sort of general labor. It's just you get the jobs easy and you'll be able to do that. Is your credit score affected when you are deployed overseas and you had some, some credit card loans? You'll be able to pay online. So to pay, you don't go to pay on the site. You pay online from your bank. Or you can put it there automatically. Each, each debt, they take the money from, from your bank. So there is no need. Like you, you, They don't care whether you have been able to deploy or not. You have to take your affairs in order. Uh, Gasigua, yes, it is possible. If you have green card, you can be able to travel back and forth. Even if you get the green card today, you are here after today, tomorrow, you travel back. They don't care. E shopping, EBM. If you earn about $2,000 per month, how much will you be able to save when you live alone in the US? If you get $2,000 and you are in the normal states and you don't have any complication, you can save even like $800. Because it's just the the bigger amount will be uh, transportation. Uh, then you will be able to use it for housing and food, a few other things. So you can be able to save even seven uh, seven hundred, depending on how well you want to put yourself. Uh, Ruth, uh, MG Lifestyle, most African countries do Roman Dutch law and America does American law, which is a lot of it broken into different areas, environmental law, entertainment law, immigration law, criminal law, very, very correct way, yes. So here when you are going to become a lawyer, you specialize to become an immigration lawyer. Not a lawyer like in Tanzania, you do criminal, you do whatever, entertainment, here you come, you specialize on one particular area. How long is the military contract? You, most of the jobs you start with four years. 
how many years do you need to retire? You, you are going to add the contract. You are starting with four years if you want to add it two years. So you can go whatever years you want, but mostly when you say retirement is 20 years to receive the pension is 20 years in the military. Please, what age can you uh, join the U.S. Navy? From 18 to 20, 35. How long? Uh, okay. How long it takes to get a promotion in the army? In the military, promotion is there depending, like rank and rank, it depends. But in most cases, there is a time in grade and there are certain ranks you have to take the exam. There are certain, is automatic. So some it might be just after one year or after six months, you can go. Most is just one year. Some after one year, you qualify to take the exam. If you pass the exam, then you get promotion. Which branch of army? First of all, army is a branch. Pays well. So here we say the U.S. military. Within the U.S. military, there is army. Army is the ground troop. Then there is marine. I mean, marine is part of the navy. There is navy. There is air force. Though marine, you can say is branch, but the marine is part of the navy. So all the branches, if you are the same rank, you get the same amount of money. So it doesn't matter whether you are in the marine, whether you are in the army, whether you are in the air force. If you are E one, you are all receive the same amount. Uh, what are the internet data plans like? Is internet cheap or expensive like this side? Here the internet is very affordable. So for instance, at our house, at the corner here, I have what we call the, the Wi-Fi for the entire house. And the Wi-Fi for the entire house, I pay, uh, we pay $50 per, per, year, per month. And that you get almost like 100 or 150 GB. Uh, meaning, if it reaches that point, not, the internet will go slow. It's not going to be cut off. It will be slow. For my phone, uh, I pay uh, unlimited, uh, almost like $60 for the internet. That means after reaching 100 GB, my internet will go slow. So, but still is affordable. The TV is expensive not the internet, because the TV uh, is just including a lot of other things. Which minimum IT jobs uh, is jobs, per hour, how much you ever in Massachusetts? I do not know exactly in Massachusetts, but IT jobs, they pay well in general. So you can start the job, you can start with a $20, that would be normal, or $18, that would be normal. I'm not answering the question for the green card at the moment. Can you apply to join the army whilst you are in the Africa? No, you can't go doing up here because you must be a green card holder or a U.S. citizen. They have to, also even if you are a green card holder or a U.S. citizen, they have to take the medical. They have to uh, check your background. They have to take the uh, drug test. They have to do a fingerprint. How is the internet situation like when you are deployed in the ocean? It is the worst internet, uh, slowest internet you ever receive in your entire life. Ruth uh, Lifestyle, thank you so much for responding. You say doctors can just go write exam and certify within the state. It depends with the comfort levels. Yes. I've already given the link for the uh, uh, Telegram group. So let me end up uh, right now. Uh, uh, thank you, Liz. You said you have to leave because you have to go to work. Thank you. Uh, I've already posted the link for the uh, Telegram group. Uh, how, sir, how can I get the in, uh, how can I get a host? There is a way you can find a host. Find a friend. Don't have uh, all people, your friends are from Kenya or Tanzania or Malawi. Have friends. Have just something like Follow people on the social media. Don't follow the video. The video will not help you anything. People follow the video, follow diamond platinums. They don't help you with anything. Follow people if they are in the US, even if they are not famous. What is the standard of living at in the United States? I don't know if that that uh so the level of standard, like, I don't know, we mean the cost of living in general or the standard, the quality of life. But if you're talking about the cost of living, it depends on the state and it depends on the city and it depends on the neighborhood. 
because the cost depends for this. California in general is high expensive, very expensive. Uh, uh, New York is very expensive. New York, uh, Maryland, Virginia, uh, DC is very expensive compared to say when I live in Missouri or live in uh, Texas, when you live in Ohio, live in the Midwest, those are affordable states. So it depends. And then it depends city and city, even California, there are certain parts of the desert versus someone who lives in uh, La Jolla nearby the beach in San Diego. Uh, Agro Albert Hubbard, there is any job opportunities for someone who has interest in work in the agriculture sector. Yes, but don't go to work in the agriculture sector in New York. Obviously, you have to go to the states which they have more agriculture opportunities. Most of the Midwest states, they are very famous in agriculture. So I think that will be the last question. Uh, what about uh, rescuer jobs as lifeguards? They don't pay much. But what you can do, uh, Helen Nabwire, you can join a uh, Coast Guard. Coast Guard, they work, it's just like in Navy, but Coast Guard, they work in the ocean. So in, it's another branch of the military, but it's just Coast Guard. You can, if you want to work like lifeguard. So Coast Guard, they work in the ocean uh, to rescue people, but also at the same time to protect uh, from the ocean. It would be better than going to be a rescue. They would be working at the pool. Like lifeguard is, is that is a job we get ten dollar per hour, fifteen dollar per hour. It's not like a career job. We can be able to work as lifeguard. Yeah. So personal, you can be, you can do a lot of things on that way. You can be an instructor for lifeguards. Like there are some colleges. Yes. Uh, Helen Abu will say, uh, ladies are eligible for truck driver. Are you asking that way? Yes. You are you are allowed uh, to work as a truck driver. They don't care. Uh, hi, EBM. What about the coffee maker, barista? Those are the temporary jobs. It's not like the job you are working for your career. Those are the jobs you work at uh, Starbucks, Coffee Bean, whatever those kind of things. Uh, $10, $12 per hour, $15 per hour maybe. It's not the job we say like, okay, uh, it's different from you say, okay, yes, you, it's, it's a good job to start with. But again, uh, you can work that one, but not like... I'm giving an example for getting work to get work experience, but if you become a supervisor, become a manager, yes, that is a good deal. But not just like uh, you come with specifically for the dream of becoming a uh, coffee maker, no. So that will be the last question at the moment. Uh, so for that particular case, I would like to remind people to go and subscribe now if you haven't subscribed to my EBM Scholars channel. Right now, the goal, 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So please subscribe. And for those who are speaking Swahili, I know there are some people who, from Kasulu, whatever, Tanzania, Kenya, some people in Uganda who know Swahili, some people in uh, Burundi, they know Swahili, DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo, some people in Sudan, they know Swahili. Even some people in Ghana, they, they are going to learn Swahili or South Africa. Please remember to subscribe to my Swahili channel, uh, youtube.com slash EBM Swahili, or go and search YouTube, uh, Swahili, EBM Swahili, you'll be able to get me there. So thank you, thank you so much, each and everyone, for your continued support of the EBM Scholars. Uh, subscribe now, and I appreciate each and everyone. Uh, tomorrow again, same time, I'll be live uh, we can be able to do that. And tomorrow I'm planning to uh, find someone to interview so we can be able to have the interview. And if you have any question, I'll be happy to respond to those questions. May God bless you. And if we, uh, in your area is night, good night. Here it is afternoon, 2 p.m. on my central time here. Thank you so much, each and everyone. May God bless you. And 